Welcome back to the Global Goal Studio, where we're talking about the future of the planet. And my co-host is Linda Pazuti. Henry, Linda, over to you. Thanks, Richard. Mike, we want to talk to you next. And you have had what could be called a unique perspective on Earth. What is it like to view Earth from space? Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me, Linda. It's great to be here with my friends, uh, Dave, and my new friend, Emily. And it's just wonderful to be here. The, the, um, the, the opportunity to fly in space is extraordinary. The thing that stays with, I think, most astronauts, certainly with me, was viewing our planet from that perspective. As you know, there's a lot of beautiful places that we can visit and look at here on Earth. But I think the true beauty of our planet is seen when we get away from it and we view it from, from space. And during my second spacewalk is when I had, uh, for me, the best look. Because when you get outside of the spaceship and you're spacewalking, there's no window to restrict your view. I could look anywhere I wanted. And our altitude, where we were at the Hubble Space Telescope, 350 miles, gives us the opportunity to see the Earth in its entirety. We can see the curve of the planet. And it was during my second spacewalk where I had a break in the action to really enjoy the view. And when I really just concentrated on it, forgot where I was and just looked at our planet, the thought that went through my mind was, it's too beautiful for human eyes to behold. This is a secret. People aren't supposed to see this. And Linda actually turned my head. The other, don't look at it. It's too beautiful. And I was like, what are you, crazy? Of course you have to look at it. When are you going to come back here? So I looked a second time, and the beauty of the planet just kind of hit me deep in my soul. And I started to become emotional. And I started feeling a tear to well, twelling up in my eye. And then I became nervous because... We were having trouble with a drink bag. Water was coming out in previous flights, mixing with our anti-fog, which is like a soapy substance and causing eye irritation with the crew members. And here I am introducing my own liquid into the spacesuit, And then it would be an investigation and I would have to admit that I was crying. So I got myself under control and I looked a third time. And at the third time that I looked, the thought that went through my mind was, this, this must be like the view from heaven. This is the best view in the world. In the, in the universe. And then I thought, no, no, that's not quite right. It's more beautiful than that. This is what heaven must look like. I felt I was looking into absolute paradise. And I felt that we are so lucky to be here. And I could also see the fragility of the planet. You can look like tangentially to the planet and see the atmosphere. It's a thin line. There's not much of it. It's like the top thin layer of an onion in relation to the size of the onion. And then I looked down at my hands. I actually looked at my space and I realized, the only way I can see this is because I'm wearing this fancy spacesuit. That's the only thing that's keeping me alive. There's no life support just a little bit above our planet. We're out of luck. And then I turned and looked at the blackness of space, Linda. And I looked at, we've checked out the neighborhood. We have nowhere else to go. We have to make this planet work. It is the, it is the most beautiful place to be. I can't imagine any place being more beautiful than our home planet. It's a place we all share and we need to take care of it. What a beautiful perspective. I teared up when you were saying that and I didn't have to worry about any, any spacesuit uh, yeah. doing there. And it's such an important um, message about we're not in a great neighborhood. You know, we're, we're a beautiful yeah. place, but we're, we're not in a great neighborhood and, and the options. And so, you know, what, what David was calling it in terms of, of spaceship Earth uh, really, really connects well to, to what you were saying. Yeah. And, you know, when you were on the spacewalk and you had this, this urgency, how did you how did you go about communicating this? We have to do something about this. We really have to protect this. We don't have a choice. I, I think I think for me it is trying to spread the word as best I can. You know, working with people like my friend Deva with her organization, wherever I can, letting people know through my writing or my speaking that we are very fortunate to be here and that we need to understand that it's a it's a beautiful place, but it's also very fragile. And as Davis said earlier, there are things we can do to try to preserve it. And we need to do everything we can to keep it, to keep this beautiful home that we have. Because the other sense I got is going around the planet so much is I feel when I think of home now, when I was a kid, I thought about my neighborhood. Now I think about my home as planet Earth mm -hmm. and being going around it so many times, you see that it's a, you get the sense that it's a planet that we all share. No matter where we are, we all share the same home. That's beautiful. When we come back, we're, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to look, connect um, space to climate change. We'll be right back in the Global Gold Studio.